It's another Saturday afternoon and we're in the Gunners Club and we do have a special visitor. You're going to be talking to us about Oktoberfest and how appropriate, seeing as it's October. <laughs> and, and, you know, I don't need to wait for Oktoberfest. I have it all the time. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That's it? Oh, I like it. Hey, how come yours is bigger than mine? Uh, because I know we shouldn't be comparing sizes, you know, but... Because it has a special emblem at the front. <laughs> oh, okay. Gunners Club. <laughs> Oktoberfest. Yes. By the way, my name is Liz. Hello, Liz. <laughs> so, where was the first original Oktoberfest in e the world? Educate me. Oh. <laughs> okay, it was in Munich, Germany. Okay. On a big meadow in front of town because it was 1810 and it was the marriage of uh, Crown Prince Ferdinand and Princess Therese. And they put on a festival for the people and the friends and those ones they had to invite in front of the city, uh, which is now in the middle of the city of Munich, and to celebrate their marriage. Did they, did they put on the beer as well? Oh, for sure. I'm it was sure all paid for. It, I'm sure it was all paid for. And I don't remember getting an invite. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get these sessions for past lives. Maybe you did. Ah, <laughs> it got lost in the mail. <laughs> yes. So, people liked it so much that it became a tradition. Okay. And nowadays it's two weeks long, starts middle of September and finishes on the first weekend in October. So I always tend to say that's why people thought differently 200 years ago. It co it's called Oktoberfest because it's finishing in October. Ah, not start, okay. And I have no idea if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> but you guys can comment below and let us know. Yes, please. <laughs> That's a pressing question I always wanted to have answered. <laughs> you have heard of Google, haven't you? <laughs> I tried, but it didn't give me any info. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so it's a main event in Munich. It's a big event in Munich. No, you don't have to leave the town if you don't like it. Uh, but you can't really uh, miss it because it's all over German TV and uh, they report about it. So it's quite important. Well, it must be. It's obviously something that people have taken to their heart because it's basically been exported all over the world. I mean, fancy having a German beer festival in Melbourne. I mean, I'm sure they have it in other capital cities too, but I oh, mean, worldwide. you know. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yes, they do. So it's the beer drinking and it's the sitting together and it's having the food and having those two big parades on the first two days of the festival kicking it off. And I remember uh, as a young youngster, because I was born in Munich, uh, I live now in Melbourne, Australia, and I remember going to the uh, two big parades uh, just soaking it all in and people went with ladders there to stand higher so they could see yeah. better <laughs> because they've been quite wide so you could stand in the fifth or sixth or seventh row if you've chosen the wrong position or if you came too late so the first parade is do you know why they did that don't you the parades or the no ladder? no the ladders no i don't it was probably the young blokes climbing up on top to check out these women wearing their bar wench outfits. That's what it was. Ah. Yeah, they didn't miss out on that. I'm sorry, I'm too innocent for that. <laughs> <laughs> too innocent for that. <laughs> we'll take your word for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so they have these two parades. And the one, first one is all the major breweries having the horse carts decorated with the kegs on top and 
transporting the important people of the brewery. I wouldn't have a clue who that is, but anyhow. That's where the Carlton United tradition came in. They had those, that big horse-drawn carriage with all the barrels on it. It's now in a museum. It's been, it was donated by Carlton United Breweries here in Melbourne to the museum um, out in central Victoria. Uh, it's basically a beer museum. That's what it is. Mm. Yeah. And they have the original one there. It used to have six Clydesdale horses, you know, the really big horses. And it was just absolutely loaded up with these barrels. So, no, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Breweries actually have horses still till today, or the Munich breweries, because they need them for the annual parade. Hmm. Oh, there you go. And when they all arrived and the mayor is there and in one tent, the Schottenhammel tent, which is the famous tent to opening the Oktoberfest, the mayor stands there and they put him a hammer and the thing to get into the keg and he has to drive it into and they are counting how many hits he needs. That means, is he a good mayor or not? Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends how much he's sampled the proceeds beforehand. Not, f No beer before the mayor hasn't driven the thing into the keg. Well, the mayor is an important man. Oh. You don't know he's had some liquid lubricant bought in for his arm, you know, mm. so he can swing it better. Mm, good thought. Can we have some comments on that one? <laughs> or, perhaps, or perhaps schnapps, I don't know. <laughs> did the Munich mayor in 2024, or any other one before that, have any additional help to drive the keg into the... Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> and before he can say his famous words, Ozapft is or not can you help us out there yeah <laughs> no no it's actually no, quite did, did dangerous did you like that no <laughs> it can be dangerous well only if you miss yes uh, yeah your thumb is yeah, e dangerous. exactly yeah or you can let go of the hammer oh. you know? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> or you drive but, it in not straight and all this beer comes out okay and you and your neighbours standing there are getting trenched in beer. There are worse ways to go. That's <laughs> right, but he has to stay there for another couple of hours after that and uh, sit with, I don't know, important people and celebrate the Oktoberfest. So they actually advise them to bring a second outfit. Or a raincoat, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> Umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> See, they need to be prepared for these things. Yes, we, we have worked it all out. Exactly. They, they need to put us in charge. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, this beer comes to us directly from Kilo, from the beer factory. Mm. Thanks, Chris. And it tastes very nice, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, have you ever been to an Oktoberfest in, 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 in Melbourne? Sadly, no. I have never been to an Oktoberfest. I've been invited a number of times and oh. something always happened. And oh. Well, I mean, let's face it. I would not decline an, Octo an Oktoberfest unless there was something drastic going on. <laughs> and unfortunately, every year, something happens to fall on that particular time and I can't go. Hmm, believe me, it's not my choice. <laughs> so nowadays they have it more in those smaller locations like the German clubs. Okay. Or uh, in the two German restaurant bars, places which we have nowadays in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. So if you ever go there and film there, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, there is a place in Melbourne Market Lane, as a matter of fact. Yes. The Hofbräu House. Oh, the famous Hofbräu House, not in Munich, but in Market Lane, which is in Chinatown. That's right. Melbourne. And so you have this one. From them. From them. Awesome. Have a look. Yeah, because they 
tend to celebrate Oktoberfest all year round. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically now as they have like a beer hall was it in, on the first floor and that's the rest, right and the restaurant yep. downstairs yes. and the food is to die for it is that good <sighs> the traditional german and bavarian food mm. the smoked pork leg pork knuckle yes that's the one oh the small portion of a pork knuckle <laughs> where you yes mm. but i mean the meat just falls off the bone it, right. and and it's smoked and it's and how well does that go with a beer? Oh. <laughs> it's one of our fa fa favourite places to go with the she who must be obeyed. And just to name her officially? <laughs> <laughs> the she who must be obeyed. <laughs> a lovely lady, his wife. Yeah, yeah. As we are in Max, let me show you another Bavarian Oh, Max. that's different more traditional and actually they're getting handed out if you've worked for 30 40 50 years you get it as a present and then they engrave your name on the top or for whatever if you work for who or for what or oh, just company, anywhere oh okay yeah. so they hand out bimok and this is the uh fly catcher or the fly avoiding thing yeah <laughs> so you take a sip sorry it's empty at the moment i just demonstrate yeah. And then you make sure you close this down again. But it also keeps the gas in a little to, to keep, does stop the beer going flat too, doesn't it? The real reason was that in the old times, uh, dad sent his children or his son or his daughters or all of them to get him beer. So they went down and to protect it from getting spilled everywhere. Oh, right, okay. They actually put this thing on top. Ah. Ah. That makes sense. But the inventive children, of course, had a little bit of a sip. <laughs> and then the whole thing fell down and the foam was down. So they took a stick and twirled it up again before they presented it And what? Uh, uh, and, and, and seeing as the volume went down, what did they fill it back up with? I do not know. <laughs> so the dad wouldn't <laughs> realise. <laughs> I think they just, you know, foam can yep. take up quite a bit. So okay. That is actually also a typical thing when you get a mass in the Oktoberfest. This is not a mass. This is half a litre. What do they credence at an Oktoberfest? Is it normally a litre? It is a litre. Aha. Uh -huh. And th this is the size. Whoa! Of these ones. Yes, I have seen those beer wenches carrying a dozen of these and stacked up. Yep. I mean, the arms on those women to carry that much weight like that. And most importantly, not to spill it. No. <laughs> and to chase everyone away by shouting at them who is in their way. Yeah. There's a trick to it. So they don't hold them out there. They use this here to hold them together. <laughs> and the good ones are holding 14 of them. Wow. Because you can always put one on top. Yeah, that's right. My kind of woman. <laughs> <laughs> Just because yours is bigger doesn't mean it's fancier. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't carry them and put something on top no. of the Oktoberfest. That's it. So what makes this so fancy? Uh, because it just looks fancy. What does it say on there? Can you read that? Tell us what that says. Beer is gesund zu jeder Stund, which means beer is healthy any time. You see, I could not have said that better. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a nicely decorated one and uh, maybe someone can enlighten us about the different styles because that is blue and white so that sounds Bavarian to me and typical scenes people sitting together uh, after ha with harvesting and crops and no further in 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 uh, no further information on, hmm. the, on the thing awesome there you Beautiful. go. 
Oh, more, more fancy here. Yeah. <laughs> Fits your thumb. That's it. <laughs> Easily and effortlessly. But do you know how much a mass costs in, at the Oktoberfest this year? How much one of these? Yeah, with beer. I have never been, so I don't know. It's a politicum. It's always discussed how outrageous the uh, beer prices are this year on the Oktoberfest. Can we still afford it? 15 euros. Take it roughly by 1.5 and then you are in Australian dollars. Oh, okay. So, well, well, you're still talking 20 bucks. 22, 23. Yeah, Australian. Australian dollars, yeah. Okay. Actually, do you know what? If you go to a pub and you buy a schooner, when you measure that out, that's about equivalent. It's it's not outrageous. Here we go. Here we go. Bavarian people. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Having said that, in Australia, we are the highest taxed uh, place for alcohol in the world. And beer in Bavaria is more is really more closer to food than to alcohol yeah <laughs> <laughs>
marriage disaster. And rightly so. <laughs> <laughs> Woman, the that... beer does not taste today. <laughs> Cheers, this beer tastes. <laughs> this is just something we threw together because it's October, and I'm sure it's October Fest somewhere or about to end, and how timely. Absolutely. You've just missed Oktoberfest or you just can experience the last weekend depending on when you watch this video. That's right. And I can't say I'm upset that I missed it because I'm here in good company, drinking beer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so noisy. You can have a conversation. There is only one thing I miss. <sighs> Is those German bar wenches. I have to get one of those. Bar wenches? Yeah. You know, dressed up in all the gear and bringing me the, you know. I, I, I think I really need... I need to put one on retainer. So every time I, my bar is... I mean, my bar is open all the time. But every time I'm in here, she's there, jumping on the taps, pouring me beers. <laughs> oh, yeah. More, more, more than one, just to keep up. Ah. <laughs> it was a pleasure being here i hope you got some news about the oktoberfest started in 1810 and prost i'm going to enjoy this beer now well it's good thing that you do because we have more <laughs> <laughs> and by the way here is the line and he poured more than that. I, I would never make a good barman. <laughs> I, you'd be drinking all my profits. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.